Dr. Ming Sang Zuala, uh, our resource person, he is uh, an assistant professor from Government Matthew College. Uh, before uh, we invited him, I would like to mention a brief introduction about him. Sir, Dr. Si Ming Sang Zuala, he has a postgraduate diploma in urban planning and development studies. And he have also a post, he is also a, he was, I mean, he was also a postgraduate diploma in uh, disaster management. He specialized in development studies and disaster management. Sir had published one book. Uh, he have also uh, presented paper in uh, different state, national and international journals for more than 10 times. And he had also uh, been invited in uh, different talks as a panel and anchor in national broadcasting television for more than 20 times. Uh, he was also a guest faculty at Mizoram University. He was also uh, an assistant professor at ICFA University, and he worked there uh, for three years. So uh, that's a brief introduction about him. Uh, about him. Sir, uh, let's see if uh, he have uh, any uh, connection.
Due to uh, some technical problems uh, that uh, our resource person have faced, uh, we have to uh, change our program a little bit. So uh, right now, uh, uh, let's uh, invite Assistant Professor Cesar Nakamura. Uh, he is uh, he used to uh, present his uh, topic in the uh, second session, but due to some technical difficulties. Uh, we have to change our program, as uh, I've mentioned before. So uh, let's uh, invite Sarzira. But before uh, we invite him, I would like to state a brief introduction about him. Uh, Sarzira worked as a, a geography teacher at Reverend Sai Aitanga Memorial House Secondary School, Aizol. And he also worked as a supervisor under DEFT Private Research Limited, commissioned by ILO. Uh, he have also uh, he cleared net. Uh, now uh, let's invite Sarzira to present his topic, shifting shift the shifting agriculture system of Mizoram to combat climate change. Sir. Okay, thank you, Miss, for giving me time. Uh, greetings to you all. First of all, I would like to thank my senior colleagues for giving me this opportunity uh, to present, uh, to have a presentation on a very important issue, climate change. Like any other parts of the world, it is indeed a big concern for the state of Mizoram too. So I would like to share my screen. Okay, I think uh, my screen is visible. So, as uh, we all can see, that my topic is based on shifting the shifting cultivation of Mizoram to combat climate change. Though it look it may look very bold to have a paradigm shift on the age old traditional agriculture system, which we have been practiced for a very long period of time, even till today. Uh, since our great great grandfather's time, even till today. So my data will be mainly based on various, uh, <clears throat> from the data that I have collected from various concerned departments from Champai, and from my personal report, as well as from various internet source. So my topic will mainly deal with the concept of shifting cultivation and some data regarding shifting cultivation how zoom cultivation is the mother of all uh, fire incidents in Mizoram and rainfall pattern. Uh, recent effects of climate change on certain crops uh, across Mizoram. And also I would like to highlight some model village and uh, some model persons who have striving to move away from this age old uh, shifting agriculture system. So I think I can move on. Uh, shifting cultivation is also known as zoom cultivation, uh, mainly in the northeastern region. So it is Pusilandiliana, or from the Dreng Lai, call it Tuklorlo. So I really like this word. So I would like to highlight this. So, origin, the origin itself is very old. So it was started during 1300 to 3000 BC. And as per Mizoram Economic Survey, a Zoom area comprised of 18,957 hectare area. And 
Pedi comprised of 17,265 uh, 17, hectares. So, agriculture and the sector contribute to our GSVA, that is gross debt value added, 28.48%. Out of this, uh, Zoom and Pedi comprise of only 20.43%. So according to MES 2019 and 2020, the annual requirement of food grain is uh, 180 million, million uh, sorry, 1.8 metric ton, 1.8 lakh metric ton. So our state had contributed in PD and Zoom uh, 59,605, which is only a 33%. That means we are importing uh, 66.89 percent from other state that is mainly uh, Punjab and uh, <coughs> Punjab, Haryana and uh, other state. So zoom cultivators comprise of uh, 58,751 household, which is 26.36 percent. So around uh, 60 persons are under uh, food grain cultivation under zoom cultivation. So I don't know whether this is a, a positive or negative. Uh, it shows a decline. This Zoom cultivation has shown a decline trend uh, during 2012 and 13 to 2013 and 14. There is a slight decline of a Zoom area. And also, I would like to highlight this uh, national forest policy of 1988 issued by government of India one of the main causes of the loss of forest is because of zoom cultivation. In the introductory speech, I have highlighted that uh, zoom cultivation uh, is the mother of all uh, forest fires. So I would like to highlight those uh, uh, data. So here in the site factor, the source of deterioration of air quality in Mizoram is mainly due to shifting cultivation or slash and burn agriculture or zoom burning, one of the main form of agriculture and livelihood of the villagers. So I would like to highlight some data. This data is uh, accessed from Environment, Forest and Climate Change Department, uh, administrative, academic and administrative report of 2018 and 2019. So it clearly shows that uh, the spot verification of fire incidents in 2019. Here I, I would like to highlight uh, the total a number of fire incidents during 2019 is was 1,357, and the right column shows uh, in terms of hectare area. This is attributed to zoom uh, cultivation. So the area, the total area for Mizoram, uh, this is uh, the eight districts of Mizoram excluding those uh, three administ newly administrative districts such as uh, Kozol, Saitwal, and Nathiel. So, okay, I'll move back once again. So here, uh, Champai district alone contribute more than 55% with 2,666. So it is indeed uh, a concern for this particular district. So it is more than 55%. So this, are uh, also the, the based on environment, forest, and climate change department, the same data. So the types of crown, uh, it is mainly attributed to this ground fire and zoom burning. Okay, this is as per the data of uh, Champai Forest Division, uh, 2020 data. So uh, it is uh, Champai district, undivided Champai, I should say. So it, there are 88 fire incident, and out of this 88 fire incident, uh, 54 are zoom areas. 54 fire incident are uh, because of zoom, and five are because of chahal, which is also associated or a part of uh, this zoom cultivation. So 23 are unknown, and uh, six are categorized as others. So even these six others are because of burning of debris and burning of dry grass on pedifield. field. And this is the latest data 
and the upper portion shows the undivided jampai. Uh, uh, as you all know that uh, some portion of Saitual district and Kosol had been carved out as a new district. So it is included here in this data. So it's, it clearly shows that uh, number of fire incidents, uh, the total number of fire incidents in undivided Champai in 2021. Uh, uh, what I should note is that uh, uh, 2021 is still running. So this is not the end. There are 154 number of fire incidents in undivided Champai with a total hectare area of 1,624. So the below table shows Champai district alone. So the total area, the total number of fire incidents here at Champai district particularly uh, was 99 and the total area is 1,272. So this is a times of India. Then I think we have, we still remember this day, 25th April, 2021. So there was a massive fire breaks out in Mizoram. Uh, it was the day that, uh, Long, uh, sorry, Lung Lai and its surrounding areas were burned during this day. So I had a record here in the right uh, picture uh, from uh, Professor Pirin Omar, uh, which he had posted in one of the group. So I at least down all the all those fire incident across the length and breadth of Mizoram. So I at least out 27 areas. Uh, apart from this, there are many uh, which I have not mentioned and which I have not a list out. And this is uh, Hindu, and it shows the temperature of ISOL. Then ISOL records on 15 April 2019, ISOL records 34.2 degrees Celsius, highest in 20 years. So I don't know whether this, uh, the right picture that is business standard would be reliable or not. So on 6 May 2019, uh, it was a highlight as 36.7 degree. I don't know whether this would be reliable, but uh, it is evident the left picture is reliable enough because uh, this data is mainly based on this uh, Directorate of Science and Technology. Okay, next this is it's based on statistical handbook and it shows monthly average rainfall, mainly uh, Yesterday and day before yesterday, uh, during the initial time of our webinar, uh, some of our research person have talked about the, the concept of climate. So in the concept of climate, uh, as we all know that rainfall, uh, temperatures and humidity are essential part of this uh, uh, climate change. So uh, mostly uh, Mizoram living in a tropical and subtropical region, uh, we receive rainfall to, from the southwest monsoon. So I want to highlight that May and September are the peak seasons for rainfall. And here in the right column shows uh, data for uh, 19 years, that is from 1998 to 2017. So in this uh, 20 years, sorry, 19 years, almost 20 years, 2004 uh, record 3,506 millimeters. Mainly uh, rainfall is uh, measured in terms of millimeters uh, in a, a government record. So here after a decade in 2014, uh, the rainfall was, this is the lowest and the highest. I would like to mention that 2004 was the highest and 2014 is the lowest during this whole uh, 19 years. So what I want to note is that uh, the rents, the rents of this uh, decadal years or during these 20 years is very high. So the rents is 1,684 uh, millimeters of rainfall. So these are the rainfall of uh, Champai and I get the source from uh, Department of Agriculture. So I get this data until July. This is the latest data. And I would like to analyze from January to July. So from this January to July, the rainfall varies a lot. So I would like to 
highlight 2021. So in 2021, we had a total rainfall of 733. Uh, okay, I'll move the slide. Each. Okay, it clearly shows that uh, there is a different of rainfall, particularly during the month of January to July. Okay, I would like to show by a line graph in the next slide. So if we look clearly this slide, we saw that we clearly see that uh, there is a decline in the trend of uh, rainfall. So this trend of rainfall has been declined. In 2021, uh, the total rainfall uh, from January to July is 733. So from 2010 to 2020, during this decade, we can see that I think uh, you can see it my cursor. Uh, 88, triple eight, that is 888 millimeters. So this is the lowest during this uh, decade, but as compared to this year, the rainfall is much lower as compared to the lowest rainfall during this whole decade. So I would like to move to the next slide. I think uh, you can see this circle. This is a village known as Pilea at Sierchip district. This data uh, is taken from, is accessed from Puar Lerin Oma, who is currently working as sub-divisional agriculture officer at Sierchip. So uh, in a telephone con uh, conversation, he told me that till 27th uh, July, 2021, there was, a, there was a report of rice blast. I think we have heard in the news, uh, they had shown in uh, different news media such as, uh, what do you say, Dudarsan and other uh, Zonet, etc. So there are 25 villages reported because of a rice blast. I don't know uh, how much, I don't know much about the scientific and the disease pattern. Uh, it is a fearsome fungal rice disease. She said that it is mainly caused because of low rainfall. Okay, here in Champai also I had approached uh, agriculture development, uh, additional uh, district agriculture officer, and uh, there is there was a report, and but not officially recorded during this street. Uh, during my survey time, that is 28 July 2021. So in Champai district, this uh, village had been impacted or there was a report from this village, Sao Kobung, Tui Pui, Zaute, Dilkon, Vapai, Ngopa, Kozol, Champai. So these are mainly caused because of a low rainfall, which I had mentioned just uh, in the previous slide. Okay, this is, uh, it is boldly written as uh, in Rilipui. Rilipui is one of the most uh, reputed newspaper in Champai. So it was on 31st July 2021. So what they highlight is that in a front page, so at Langsam, they were uh, cultivating this uh, potato. So it is mainly cause uh, the, the production of potato is beyond their lower beyond their expectation of their production. So it is because of this uh, lowest rainfall. And this is a focus, a project focus. I think we have heard so many times uh, about focus project. So focus is uh, the acronym itself is uh, fostering uh, climate resilient up upland farming system in the northeastern region. Mainly, it has been uh, implemented in Mizoram and Nagaland. So it is under the United Nations Agency, IFET, which is known as International Fund for Agriculture Development, and was started in Mizoram on 25th January 2, and uh, the end time will be 2024 till 2024. And Agriculture is the nodal agency. And in uh, different districts, these are the pilot districts where FOCAS has been uh, started 
and Saitual and Kozol are the new districts of this pilot district. So mainly they are concentrated in the northern region of Mizoram. So focus main project and yeah, they are mainly emphasized on this uh, to provide farmers with a better zoom cultivation practice that will be more uh, productive and more sustainable, thus creating an ecological balance, enhancing resilience to climate change and raising farmers income, and also to assist a Jumia's household to adapt alternative farming system, particularly settled farming system. So their main intention and their main focus uh, is on uh, to shift from uh, shifting cultivation to a settled uh, farming system. And uh, if this project is fruitful and benefit, so it would touch the life or the, or the life from Mizoram and Nagaland around more than uh, two lakh household in Mizoram and Nagaland. Okay, uh, focus main focus is on uh, zoom improvement and not merely on this shifting agriculture because there is a very uh, red big because uh, village councils are unable to give community land for settled agriculture because when they give uh, community land for this agriculture for this settled agriculture. Uh, they need to sustain their family. They need to feed their family for during before they harvest this kind of crop. Suppose, let's say, uh, let's give an example of uh, orange. Suppose if they are giving orange to a group of people. So before they harvest this orange, they need to uh, feed their family. So this is one of the main reason uh, in which they cling to this uh, shifting cultivation again. So. Uh, the village councils are unable to give them uh, for this settled agriculture. So now the fo focus department, focus projects are requesting the VC to give them a land pass uh, to sustain at least for three to 10 years uh, by constructing a contour trends, contour bonding and other means uh, to retain the soil fertility. I would show a picture. This, is a contour trends of a model of Uttarakhand. And uh, the right picture shows contour farming and bonding system. And uh, yesterday, uh, Dr. Rinpuya had a talk about the positive impact of uh, climate change. Yes, it is indeed. We must think to climate change does not bring only uh, a negative impact, but also a positive to the state of Mizoram. So Muga, silkworm had been shifting. The climatic condition has shifting to Mizoram. Uh, I think we have known uh, well a lot about this uh, Muga. So uh, it is a monopoly of Assam. And most of the production are from Assam here. Uh, I think you can see my cursor, 87% of the production. I don't know this data, but we know that uh, some are monopolized in this uh, silk, uh, in this Muga rearing. So they had got uh, geographical indication tech in 2007 in this Muga rearing. So the term of some Muga silk may soon become a PC as Mizoram is likely to. Uh, and see Assam as one of the major centers of Muga silk. So here in Eurasia Review News and Analysis, Mr. Chandan Kumar Dura in 2017 highlighted Muga finds its best abode in Mizoram. So we are one of the new home on Muga. Your global uh, claiming the global warming can prove to be a blessing in disguise for sericulture farmers of Mizoram, our former chief minister, Pulel Tanhola, urged the farmers to make optimum use of NERTPS, which is known as Northeastern Textile Promotion Scheme. So down here, it is boldly written as Muga heritage of Assam may face extinction by 2040. Because uh, there are some uh, climatic ideal suitability for the cultivation of uh, this kind of crops, mainly Muga 
is based on this. I don't know the name in English, so it is bull and now tapui. So this kind of uh, trees are ideally uh, suited for this uh, for Mizoram. So the climate had uh, the temperature had shift to this region. Okay, I will not discuss much about this. These are the uh, process in the life cycle of Muka. And these are the predators, the enemy for this uh, Muga. We know that uh, Muga, Muga silkworm are a very passive uh, in behavior. So we need to protect them uh, from this. So here, what uh, it is showing is that there was a net to protect Muga silkworm from uh, birds and other predators. These are the product. I think we can correlate with this uh, Assam tradition. This exactly Assam tradition. Okay, next, uh, these are the ladies bag, uh, Muga carton and others, etc. These are the product from Muga. Here, I would like to show some uh, model uh, person who had been starting this kind of cultivation. So Putlan Zara from Zautlan Lungle has started since 2016. And he had around uh, bull tree 500 and now Takui 800. And mainly they sold uh, this one kg of cocoon at around 5,000, 6,000. And here, uh, Lungle is one of a uh, destination for this kind of sericulture. So there were around 480 uh, family who are engaged in this kind of uh, sericulture rearing activity. And out of this 70, uh, are engaged in Muga cultivation alone. So this is the data from Champai uh, District Sericulture Office officer. So the officer said that Champai has a favorable climatic condition for the cultivation of this, as we have mentioned, bull and nautakui tree. So Tuol Cheng uh, and Nod Kabum had uh, engaged in this kind of uh, silkworm rearing activity, particularly this uh, Muga. So there are 35 farmers and 22 farmers in Tualcheng and North Kabum, uh, respectively. Then here, uh, approximately there are around 60 farmers in uh, undivided Champai district, including uh, Kozol district. Here are some of the price of cocoon per piece. <coughs> Excuse me. So they are classified according to the grade. So it, uh, grade A, is 1.90, grade B, 1.10. And one kg of Muga silk, I think you can see my cursor. One kg of Muga silk, this is a, a Muga silk, the finished product, uh, goes around 13,000. This is, uh, uh, the, the uh, DSO had said that this is the minimum price uh, for this Muga silk. So uh, here are the production for 2020 and 2021. This is free laying, this is known as the seed. So they had produced around 3,585 seeds of uh, DFL and they had produced around 16,970 cocoons in undivided Champai. So Champai has potential uh, in this regard. So I would like to show a grab at Malanen, Champai. So when we talk of grab or vineyard, what first come to our mind in Mizoram, particularly if we talk in Mizoram, it comes, uh, definitely it will come to Nala. So since 1995, they had been produced grape. Around 95% of the population are engaged in this cultivation. So they had been uh, preserving the environment for more than 20, uh, for 26 years. And there are 23 barrels of liters, uh, which consists of, uh, together, all together, it uh, consists of around, uh, 2.53 lakh liters. So they mainly uh, produce this Zolaidi. And uh, there was a very tragic story regarding this Nala, a grape grower society, as well as some five grape grower society. There was a liquor prohibition control bill, which was passed by the uh, legislature in 2014. So this led to the decline of market, particularly 95, more than 95% of their market. 
So here I would like to show some pipe grape growth society. Uh, it is uh, around four kilometers away from Champai at Langsa. And they mainly produce Zola diesel way and some way. So they had signed MOU with MS Radiant Company with RS65 per liters. And they had signed an MOU with the S a sacramental way with Baptist Church of Mizoram. So because of as I have said that uh, because of that legislature passing the Mizoram Liquor Prohibition Bill, uh, their market had been impacted a lot. So here in uh, on 24th January 2018 uh, in Rilipui, uh, it was boldly written as uh, some high grape growers society about Nalan Grape Growers Society, uh, which they have kept uh, for two, three years with RS 17 lakhs liters with 15 lakhs. So this is much lesser than this. Uh, one liter is much lesser than one rupees. So I, I don't know the actual uh, price of this kind of Zolaidi in the market price, but uh, in comparison to that, it is much lower Okay, here I would like to show Biate. Biate started tea plantation since 1919, and they reintroduced under NLUP since 2011. So since 2012, Samuel Tea Factory was started operating, and there was a problem again here. Their problem is because their tea leaves they used to buy at a very low price. So they are searching for uh, an alternative way alternative measures uh, to move uh, from this uh, tea plantation. But apart from this, Mizoram tea debut at the tea auction. Here it's written in the telegraph. So debut means uh, it was first list in the auctions at the tea. So these are the alternative uh, way that we are, they are seeking for. So their production had increased a lot during 2016 to 2020, 50 to 100 lakhs of rupees. So they claim themselves as one of the largest producer of orange in Mizoram, apart from uh, what you say, tea. And Sia Klumet Saila. So I would like to uh, highlight this. And most orange farmers cultivated since 1980s and they required a cold storage. They have a problem, they regret the cold storage. So I saw new easily bought at around RS4 or 5 per orange, and Vaiho bought at around RS2. Uh, the reason is that uh, the, the Vaiho are mainly from uh, Karim Grants, and uh, they used to bought at the whole or, or chart area, and they used to uh, pluck the, or, uh, the orange and uh, they used to send back to Assam and put in a cold storage. And after two, three months, they had transported back to Mizoram and sold at the rate of around 10 to uh, 20 uh, per, or, uh, per orange. So this is a very tragic story for uh, these uh, orange cultivators as well as other uh, horticulture crop cultivators. Okay, tea at Nopa. Uh, Nopa was also famous for uh, this tea cultivation. So it was inaugurated during the uh, governorship of uh, Sri Amulak Amula Ratan Koli in 2004. And it is, uh, it is still continuing. And their problem is because of this uh, global pandemic crisis, because most of the, their technicians are from uh, other states. And organic tea, Darzo is, Darzo is famous for this organic tea. And uh, Darzo is located at Natyal district at an elevation of 4,698 feet above the sea level. And Darzo is famous for its natural organic tea and conservation of forest. I think we see this, uh, uh, I would like to show my cursor here, a Award 2014 for environment. So they had been preserving this environment nearby their uh, nearby their village. So I think we can see this dense forest. 
uh, it looks so beautiful and they i really appreciate this and they have been started this tea cultivation since 1922 to uh, around 23 so it is almost uh, running uh, a century and all of the village had this kind of uh, tea leaves at least for their own consumption and tea export and tea board of India from Zorhat and Kolkata and Gowati states that Darjan tea has an export quality and has potential to export worldwide. So their potential is very high. So these are the Zixen, they call it Zixen because of its color. And uh, in 2018, Angel Business installed a tea processing machine, which is known as Darbili tea processing unit. And these are the tea processing machine. And uh, some of the experts from China had visited uh, Darzo, and it has come uh, to many attention in different parts of uh, India as well. So these are similar to Chinese variety. Darzo tea are similar to that of Chinese variety. So apart from this tea, they had planted uh, orange and ginger. So in this uh, orange alone, they had earned more than 20 lakhs in 2018. And this is as per uh, Puvala, tea processing unit operator from Darzo, who is operating currently. I had accessed this information just uh, a weeks ago. So he said that this Darbili tea processing unit can process around 100 kg per day. So they had bought the raw tea, uh, tea leaves uh, at RS30 per kg and 150 gram. See, I think we can see this. Uh, this is the finished product of the durability uh, processing unit. So they sold this uh, tea leaves, the finished product 150 gram with RS125. And the total uh, area for their cultivation is around 100 hectare area. So sugar cane at Pulpui. And Pulpui is famous for sugar cane in Mizoram. So there were around uh, 130 household and more than 50% of their household are engaged in this kind of sugar cane cultivation. Pulpui Sugar Cane uh, Society was formed and in 2017, they organized what they could. I think we still remember. It was during the time of Fu uh, And uh, they usually earn more than 500 lakhs annually. This is not a small number in such a small village earning more than 500 lakhs annually, particularly from this sugar cane. And macadamia. I think many of us have heard this and some of them, it might be a new uh, thing. So in Mizoram, uh, macadamia was uh, started by 2MJ Zakuma and yet around 170 macadamia. So the origin of this macadamia is Australia. Uh, the indigenous people, aborigines, used to consume this kind of uh, nut. It is not a fruit, it is a nut, I would like to mention. So uh, what is the relevant for this? I would like to highlight. It is often said that 20 macadamia tree can sustain a child till his university education. I think from this, uh, from this statement, we can know that uh, the value of this, I don't know actually uh, know much deeper about the market, but it was, there is a statement like this. So here uh, for harvesting, uh, just we need to wait for the fruit or the nut to be dropped to the ground. So it is a very low input, but a larger return. And the global production is, is in 2009, as per 2009, uh, 59,000 metric ton. And here are the global importers and exporters. Uh, USA is the largest importer of this kind of macadamia, followed by China and Japan. And here in the right uh, picture, it shows that uh, the, ex uh, the exporter or the output 
the producer. The largest producer is uh, South Africa, followed by Australia, Kenya, and uh, so on. So I would like to highlight uh, Myanmar because uh, Myanmar is not far away from Mizoram. So I, it might be applicable to some uh, region in Mizoram. So uh, Myanmar had started this kind of macadamia plantation since a decade, that is 2010. And it is mainly in the form of nut in cell. So I would like to show this. Uh, this is a nut in cell. And uh, they produce uh, 300 to 500 metric ton per year of NIS. These are the nut in cell. And 90% uh, of output is exported to China via Sunstead. Mainly, uh, it is mainly cultivated in Myanmar at Sunstead region and exported to uh, China. And in Myanmar, most growers report yield as low as three kilograms per tree of NIS. So what I want to note is that there is a very high carbon sequestration. I think we have heard carbon sequestration. Carbon sequestration is the process of capturing uh, this carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So it can fix up to 3.35 tons of carbon dioxide uh, per hectare. So that is equivalent with 100 kg. One tree of macadamia can absorb, can capture uh, 100 kg of uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So here, the price of macadamia in Amazon, it is available. So this is uh, 250 gram of macadamia. That is the finished product. So it costs, it's a little bit uh, smaller. So it is 1,074, 1,074 rupees. So one kg of this finished macadamia would cost around uh, more than 4,000 rupees. So the process of this macadamia is not in hucks. These are the nut in hucks, which is covered by these hucks. And the next is nut in cell. And these are the nut in cell and uh, kernel, and followed by our, uh, what we want to make, uh, either edible oil or uh, cosmetic oil, uh, oil or any other uh, edible things. So the benefit of this kind of macadamia or the potential is that it can have uh, intercropping. We can have intercropping uh, either with coffee, avocado, or mango. And I think we have noted that uh, Australia and South Africa are by far the largest producers of macadamia. And macadamia yields grafted tree. Grafted means uh, when we insert other kind of uh, species with uh, the uh, with a tree. So these are uh, the process of grafting. So if they graft, uh, after four years, they usually they yield around half kilogram per tree. So after 10 years, uh, 11 years, it is more than 10 uh, kg per tree. So here I would like to uh, highlight again bamboo cultivation at Champai. And it was started uh, since 2011 uh, by Pusong Sama, and he had an area at Molkoi and Wantang, 100 acre and 7 acre respectively. So, so he called it most Zong Sama Mao, and which is originally known in Myanmar as Pung uh, Kirwa. And uh, he has around 36,000 bamboo, that is Ahu. So a family plan to have uh, more than 40,000. So in Myanmar, this kind of bamboo, Zong Sama Mao species of bamboo is mainly used in a paper mill industry. And here it's jump high. It is mainly used for construction work. That is building a concrete building in a construction work. So usually sold uh, 12 feet of bamboo with RS-35 and uh, 15 feet of bamboo with uh, RS-50 respectively. So he said that, we could not meet the demand of Champai because many of them are constructing uh, a concrete building. So easily uh, they used to make a charcoal vinegar with this bamboo. And 
which is used for various medicinal purposes. So uh, it looks like a uh, brewing of alcohol here. They used to make a charcoal vinegar. So for the last, uh, cooperative cultivation of betel leaf at West Lungdar. So West Lungdar are around, it is in Mami district. So there, uh, there were around 30 to 40 families who are engaged in betel leaf cultivation. And our Honorable Agriculture Minister had said, uh, it is an unnecessary essential commodity because there has been a very great demand uh, in any part of Mizoram. So uh, we try to like to chew this kind of beetle a lot. So important import from other states. What we usually use to import from other states is 16 lakh 20,000 pie. So this three pie is equal to one kg. And it costs around 3,240 lakhs annually. We used to exchange beetle leaf with 3,240 lakhs annually. So we could not meet our demand. So 99, around 99% 99 of this beetle leaf is imported from other state. So they usually cultivate at Kailetzao. And till November, 2020, uh, they had earned uh, 20,520 pie. So they could not meet the demand for Mizoram. So they had produced almost 2% of Mizoram demand. And as of December, 2020, uh, they had been uh, a bit of leaf tree of there was a report of better leaf tree of 8,555. And they earn an income of around 43,000, 43 lakhs, 54,000. And here, uh, they, I think we had seen in the news, Pata in Taudil program. So this is uh, one of a mission made in Mizoram. So it is one of a, uh, self-reliant uh, project. So these are my list of the friends and uh, thank you. I think you can take your time is. Any questions for from the participants? Uh, Sarzera will uh, answer your questions. Please unmute yourself.
Any questions? Uh, if there are uh, no questions, then uh, I think uh, we can move on to our uh, next sec uh, session. Uh, uh, Dr. Siping Sangzuala, sir, are you there? Yes, yes, I am ready. Uh, we are uh, we are losing connection uh, in our first session with Dr. Siping Sangzuala. And uh, if he's ready, sir, uh, I already made if, uh, an introduction about you uh, in the in the first session. I think we need uh, we, uh, we need not to have uh, an introduction about him because uh, uh, I'd like to mention also that sir uh, uh, sir Ming he is uh, uh, an alumni from Tampai College, and uh, we are very proud of you, sir. Yes. So, uh, sir, I, uh, I, uh, you can take your time now. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, Zwali. Thank you, Miss. Thank you for your nice introduction in the first session. So, I'd like to say my de uh, deeply apologize to the organizer. Power supply is not available in our locality due to line fault from this morning 9 a.m. So I shifted my place to the other locality to search better in internet connectivity. And that's why I could not join at the exact time. The organizer needs to make some arrangements, but it's better for me to present in the last because my presentation or my topic is look like the conclusions of all uh, uh, the seminars. Anyway, I'd like to express my sincere thanks to the organizer, Sar Kuma, Sar Chuantea, Sar Marema, and other faculty members for giving me an opportune time to present a paper in a state level webinar on climate change. Still, I feel like a government some high college student, as I am a, a product of geography department, some high college. So I got a bachelor degree in 2009. Today I will be present as a resource person and uh, I like to say I will be present papers on behalf of students uh, like alumni students of the college. Then let me share my screen. Mm. Is it, can you see my screen? Yes, sir, it's visible. Okay, then I have to present. Mm. Today, my topic is, state level, uh, in the state level webinar on climate change, a brief concern for Mizora. My topic is climate change, blessing or disaster. Blessing, blessing or disaster. Then in my presentation, we have to focus on what is climate change. I simply mean, it simply means that the concept of climate change and its relationship with global warming. Then what are the causes and the impacts of climate change at the global level and in the in the Mizoram levels. Then after that, you have to go to the Mizoram scenario or blessing or disaster like that. Then uh, how trees become blessing? I mean, is that climate change may be uh, a negative effect or sometimes it may be a positive effect. Then we have to go to the who are stakeholder for the uh, prevention and conservation of forests and other important activities for uh, combating climate change. So, what is climate change? Climate change actually refers to significant change in global temperatures, precipitation, wind patterns, and other masses of climate that occur over several decades or longer. That is why we can say that it is a long-term shaping global 
Okay, climate change can be in a global level and a regional level. In some, uh, in somewhere there can be a little bit changes at the local level also. When we look back in the trends of climate change at the global level, from the mid 20th century, climate change refers specifically to the rises in global temperature. It means that it is a global phenomena of climate transformations. You see, here, global average temperature, 1880 to 2014. If you look this uh, graph, then you can simply uh, understand about the trend of rising temperatures, global average temperatures. From 1970s up, what? It is increasing. Then in 2005, uh, it's a record the warmest climate, warmest temperatures in the earth surface. And in 2020, 2020 last year, it's a record as the second warmest uh, temperature, uh, uh, temperatures over the surface of the earth. Then we have, here we have climate change and global warming. You know, as we already mentioned that climate change refers to change in the climate activities like, you know, precipitations, temperature and wind patterns. And the, uh, well, the global warming refers only to the rises of uh, global temperatures, mainly due to the increasing of the concentrations of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. You see, uh, Okay, wait. Mm. Then, according to US Geological Survey, global warming is just one, uh, one aspect of climate change. It simply means that global warming is one of the main causes, one of the main factors of changing climates over the surface of the Earth. Sometimes the terms climate change and global warming are often used as interchangeably or uh, you often use as synonyms, although they do not actually mean the something. But, you know, the National Academy of Sciences saw that the phrase climate change is growing and prefer use of global warming because it conveys that the fact that change could be an increase or a decrease in temperature. You know that uh, climate change occurring uh, before 1970s, but you know, after industrial revolutions, almost all the climate change is caused by uh, increasing of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. That is why uh, we, uh, some people, if some people say that climate change and global warming is a synonym of interior, there is no more problems. It is predicted that future climate change will include further global warming. Climate change is the effect from global warming, even though there is a little bit, uh, uh, even though they do not actually mean the same thing, but you know what they can, the climate change is actually uh, caused by the global warming in recent days. Then causes of climate change, even though we always talk about that climate change is mainly caused by the global warming, then we have different co uh, causes of climate change. Then we have two causes, uh, we can broadly classify it into two cause. Number one is natural and second one is anthropogenic. It simply means that it is a human induced. So natural causes, here in natural causes, there are a lot of factors which can cause climate change. But I pointed out that six factors of climate changes. Number one is solar in radiance. Solar in radiance. You know, solar in radiance is like Solar in radiance is the amount of solar energy 
received by the earth surface from the sun per uh, square meters. So the amount of solar energy that uh, the earth received has followed the sun's natural 11 year of some more ups and down with no net increase since 1950s. I think that you can see here in the draft. Then over the same period, global temperature has risen markedly. It is therefore extremely unlikely that the sun has caused the observed global temperature warming trends over the half past century. So solar in radiance, in solar in radiance, almost the, you know that almost all the energy that affects the climate on the earth originate from origins from the sun. The sun's energy pass through space until it hits the earth atmosphere. Only some of the solar energy intercept at the top of the atmosphere pass through the earth's surface. Some of it is reflected back into space and some is absorbed by the atmosphere. I think that whenever you, uh, you read about the heat budget, you can understand about this one. Then the energy output of the sun is not constant. It varies over times and, it's, uh, and this has an impact on our climate. It's reasonable to assume that changes in the sun's energy output would cause the climate to change. Since the sun is the fundamental source of energy that drives our climate system. You know, indeed, studies show that solar vari uh, variability has played a very vital role in past climate change. For example, a decrease in solar, solar activity coupled with an increase in volcanic activity is thought to have helped trigger the legal IAs between approximately 1650 and 1850. When Greenland cooled from 1410 to 1720s and glaciers advanced in the earth. At the meantime, you know, some of the scientists does not believe that concept, but several lines of evidence saw that these several lines of evidence saw that uh, current global warming cannot be explained by changes in energy from the sun. Since 1950, the average amount of energy coming the front, uh, coming from the sun either remain constant or increase, increase slightly. Then if the warming were caused by a more active sun, then scientists would expect to see warmer temperature in all layers of the atmosphere. Instead, they have observed a cooling in the upper atmosphere and warming at the surface and in the lower parts of the atmosphere that uh, because greenhouse gases are trapping heat in the lower atmosphere. So climate models that include solar irradiance changes cannot reproduce the observed temperature and stance over the past century or more without including a rising greenhouse gases. So the second one is Milan COVID cycle. Milan COVID cycle. The three changes in the Earth's orbit around the sun eccentricity, azeal tilt, and precessions are collectively called Milankovitch cycle. According to Milankovitch theory, these three cycle combined through, this three cycle combined through affects the amount of solar heat that reach the Earth's surface and subsequently influence climate, uh, climate patterns including periods of glaciation, ice age. The time period between these chains can be tens of thousands of years, processions and azeal tilt, or more than hundreds of thousands of years, eccentricity. What is uh, the, uh, uh, the Earth's orbit or the eccentricity? Let's see. The Earth's orbit around the sun is an ellipse, an oval shape. But it's not always the same shape of a leap. Sometimes it is almost circular and the Earth stays approximately the same distance from the sun throughout its orbit. At the other time, the ellipse is more pronounced so that the Earth move closer and farther away from the sun in its orbit. When the Earth is closer to the sun, 
our climate is warmer and this cycle also affects the length of the seasons. The measures of the chef deviation from being a cycle, in this case, the Earth's orbit is called eccentricity, then tilt, the Earth's axial tilt. The tilt in the axis of the Earth is called uh, obliquity. This angle changes with time. This angle, here, this angle, okay? This angle changes with time. And over about 41,000 years, it's moved from 21.1 uh, degree to 24.5 degree and back again. When the angle increase, the summer become warmer and the winters become colder. The, that is why the tilt of the earth exists also affects the climate of the earth. Then the third one is processions. The earth wobbles on its axis much like uh, a spinning top that is slowing down. This is called process on and is caused by gravitational pull of uh, the moon and the sun upon the earth. This means that the North Pole changes where it's point to in the sky. Currently, the earth at this point as polaris, the North Star. But over thousands of years, the axis move around in cycle and points at the different parts, points at the different parts of the sky. It impacts on the seasonal contrast between hemisphere and the timing of the seasons. Then another important causes of climate change is changes in ocean current. This is the ocean current um, during Cretaceous period, and this is the present day. So. The uh, ocean's current carry heat around the Earth. As the ocean absorbs one heat from the atmosphere, sea surface temperature increase and the ocean circulation patterns that transport warm and cold water around the globe things. The directions of these currents can shift so that different areas become warmer or cooler. As ocean store a large amount of heat, even small changes in ocean, uh, ocean currents can have a large effect on global climate. In particular, increase in sea surface temperature, increase in sea surface temperature can increase the amount of atmospheric water vapor over the oceans, increase, increasing the quantity of greenhouse gases. If the oceans are warmer, they can't observe as much carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. That is why the changes in the ocean's current can also affect the climate change, especially in the coastal areas. Then the third point is plate tectonic and volcanic eruptions. You know, over very long periods of time, plus tectonic process cause continental to move different positions of the earth. You know, for example, British was near to the equator during the Carboniferous period around 300 million years ago. And the climate was warmer than it is today. The movement of the plants also uh, cause volcanoes and mountains to form, and this can also contribute to change in climate. Lurus mountain chains can influence the circulation of air around the globe and consequently influence the climate. For example, warm air may be deflected to cooler regions by mountain. Then volcanoes also affects the climate through the gases and particles throw into the atmosphere during eruptions. The effects of volcanic gases and dust may warm or cool the earth's surface, depending on how sunlight interacts with the volcanic materials. During more major explosive uh, volcanic eruptions, large amounts of volcanic gases like uh, gases like aerosol, uh, droplets, and ash are released. 
as falls rapidly over periods of days and weeks and has it a little long term impacts on climate change. However, volcanic gases that are ejected into the atmosphere stay there for much longer period. Volcanic gases such as uh, sulfur dioxide can cause global cooling, but uh, carbon dioxide has the potential to cause has the potential to cause uh, global warming or uh, rising temperatures. In the present day, the contributions of volcanic eruptions of uh, CO2, carbon dioxide, uh, into the atmosphere is very small, equivalent to about 1% of anthropogenic caused by human emissions. Then the sec next point is changes in land cover. Here I uh, display uh, land use land cover change in India from 1960 to 2010, but it is not reflects my explanations. Changes in land, yeah, I'm going to uh, highlight or I'm going to say the changes in land cover at a global level. On a global scale, patterns of vegetation and climates are closely correlated, okay? Vegetation absorbs carbon dioxide and this can be buffer some of the effects of global warming. On the other hand, Desertification amplifies global warming through the release of carbon dioxide because of the decrease in vegetation cover. A decrease in vegetation cover via deforestation, for example, tends to increase local albedo, leading to surface cooling. Then albedo refers to how much light a surface reflects rather than absorb. Generally, dark surface have a low albedo and reflects around 90% of incoming solar radiations. Land cover with dark color vegetation is likely to have a low albedo and will absorb most of the radiation. The last natural impact is meteorite impact. You see, the this is the area of uh, Mexico. Then this is pre-impact, this is post-impact, and this is recovery uh, Sisulub impact crater. Then Sisulub, I don't know how they, uh, uh, how they pronounce it. I think that it is Sisulub, okay? Anyway, let me continue. Meteorites impact, now today most of uh, the art stay on the art. Uh, most of the art, most of the art stay on the art. Most of the art, okay. Most of the surface of the art, sorry. Most of the surface of the art stay a very little material, meteorites material. A very little material is added by meteorites and cosmic dust. However, meteorites' impacts have contributed to climate change in the geological past. A good example is the Sisulub crater, Yucatan uh, Peninsula, Mexico. Large impacts like Sisulub can cause a range of effects that include dirt and aerosol being ejected high into the atmosphere that prevent sunlight from reaching the earth. This material insulates the earth from solar radiations and cause global, time, uh, global temperature to fall. The effects can last for a few years. After the dust and aerosol fall back to the earth, the greenhouse gases caused by the, in, by the interactions of the impact or its target rocks remain in the atmosphere and can cause global temperature to increase. These effects can last decades. Then we have to go to the anthropogenetic causes. You know, the anthropogenetic causes, the amount of what is global warming, the rise of temperatures at the global level is global warming. Then you know that, yeah, as we already mentioned, that global warming is one of the major factors of uh, climate change. So 
the amounts of uh, greenhouse gases is increasing in the earth surface then you know the earth become warm so greenhouse gases includes carbon dioxide methane water vapor sulfur uh, sulfur dioxide uh, ozone nitrous oxide then among this water vapor is the most abundant greenhouse gases in the atmosphere but it stay in the atmosphere for a month shorter periods of time just a few days methane stays in the atmosphere for about nine years until it is removed by oxi uh, oxidation into carbon dioxide and water carbon dioxide co2 stay in the atmosphere much longer from years to centuries contributing to longer periods of warming these gases trap solar radiation in the earth's surface making the climate warmer okay then this is the global surface temperatures if you look this global surface temperatures you can simply understand about the importance of human activities the natural drivers the natural causes of uh, rising temperatures is very limited before 1960 then after 1970 after 1970 it means that uh, since the industrial revolution let me say since the industrial revolutions the atmospheric carbon dioxide con concentration has increased by about 40 percent and 1.5 degree temperatures according to ipcc so it means that human uh, induce uh, or anthropogenic causes of climate change is one of the most important factors then scientists say that more than 95 persons of the changing climate is caused by human activities then what are the impacts of climate there can be positive and negative impact so sea level rise number one is sea level rise global sea level has risen by about eight in eight in since reliable record keeping began in 1880 it is projected to rise another one to eight feet by uh, 21,000 then years, okay? Then I think that you can see the satellite data from NASA, global uh, sea level rise. Here from 1995 to, from 1995 to 2023, according to the records of NASA, 3.3 millimeter per year there is sea level rise 3.3 millimeter millimeters per year then here in the sorry here this is uh, the area who is actually experienced a sea level rise in bangladesh you see the bangladesh very actual sea level this is the actual sea level this region is a very heavily populated areas then after sea level rise at one meter 15 uh, 15 million people affected it means that 17000 kilometer per square of the land submerged then 1.5 meter sea level, sea, level, uh, sea level rise occurs in this Bangladesh. 18 million people affected. Then 22 person per square kilometers of lands have been submerged. Then another impacts of sea level rise. We can have negative impacts and positive impact. In negative impact, it will contam uh, contaminate drinking water. As the rising sea crawls farther and farther up the shore, in many places, it will steep into the freshwater sources in the ground that many coastal areas rely on for their drinking water. 
then salt water is on stream and when it is possible to remove the salts from water doing so is very expensive and complicated you know uh, in santiago uh, country also they trying to uh, they trying to make this kind of uh, activities but they need to spend a lot of money uh, to remove the salty waters from the uh, oceans the number two is interfere with farming. Sea level rise will interfere with farming. Those same refresh water sources we use for drinking also supply the water used for irrigation. The problem here are the same. The intruding sea could make this groundwater source saltier. Salt water can stunt or even kill crops. But creating fresh water from salt water is a costly and unsustainable practice. Number three is change of coastal plant life. You know, plants are really sensitive to their environments. Air temperature, access to water, and the chemical characteristic of soil are all factors that influence whether a plant can thrive in a given location. As rising ocean water seep into the ground, the soil near the coast will become saltier. Some plants will simply be unable to cope with the tanks in soil salinity and may disappear from the shoreline. Another important effect is that it will threaten wildlife population. You know, many forms of wildlife make their home on the beach. As the rising oceans erode the shoreline and floods the areas in which coastal animals live, animals like sorbats and sea turtle will suffer. Then it will hurt the economy. You know, the tourism and the real estate industries in different parts of the country, especially in the coastal areas, are likely to take a hit as prime bits front properties and recreational areas are washed away by rising waters. This is a fact that some involved in these industries are finding hard to swallow. North Carolina is a prime example of the conflicts between climate uh, science and economic interests. Several years ago, a team of North Carolina scientists published a report predicting a three-foot increase in sea level by the end of the country. Bad news for the popular. Pressure by economically minded local residents and real estate stakeholders, the North Carolina government eventually passed a law banning coastal policymakers from using accelerated sea level rise predictions to make decisions for their communities. But such laws don't erase the fact that flat bits are no attractions for tourists or property buyers who in the coming years may see fit to take the business to less vulnerable areas. Then the positive effects, you know, sea level rise has a lot of negative effects. At the meantime, you know, mangrove forest restoration, uh, restoration is one of the important uh, effects of uh, positive effects of sea level rise, you know, today due to the threats of rising sea level, the situation is changing. From Brazil to Europe to Singapore, communities are actively taking part in uh, planting mangrove trees. Similarly, the government of Mauritius states that 100,000 mangrove will be planted over the periods of 2016 to 2020. The second one is Restore coastal ecosystem. Coastal ecosystem. Okay, coastal ecosystem. You see, in general, most marine species will be able to keep space with sea level rise. What will happen is that most species might migrate towards the upper layer of the sea. Some coral reef may also find respite from fishing pressure as humans are forced to move from certain regions of the world, especially the low-lying atolls. Consequently, biodiversity uh, may flourish again in this region, okay? Then, you know, restoration coastal uh, 
uh, ecosystem and increasing biodiversity is another important uh, effect, effects of this sea level rise. Then new housing construction business is also run in different parts of the country. Then, uh, you know, when the sea level rise happen in uh, somewhere else, you know, the natural sea level rise natural creation and large estuaries. You know, estuaries is very common in geographical terms. Then estuaries are amongst the most productive and resilient marine ecosystem in the world. They are also quite valuable for ecologically and economically. A number of creatures inhabit estuaries and they play an integral role in coastal food webs leading to human beings. Then it also enlarges estuary channels for navigations. Then melting of ice, melting of ice. Polar ice caps are melting as global warming causes climate change. Then Arctic sea ice, we lost Arctic sea ice at the rate of almost 13% per decade over the, over the past 30 years. Then the oldest and thickness ice in the Arctic has declined by standing 95%. Then here is the poles are melting. Then change in the Arctic and Arctic, Antarctic sea ice area in millions of kilometers per square kilometer. Then I think that you can simply understand from the graph. Here in 1980, in Arctic regions, the thickness of the poles of the ice is 7.6 uh, per square millions of kilometers square. Then in 2023, uh, in 2020, it's become only 4.6 4 uh, millions of kilometers square. Then if emissions to reach unchecked, the Arctic could be ice free in the summer by 2040. But happens in the Arctic does not stay in the Arctic. Sea ice loss has far reaching effects around the world, you see. Then if you see this Antarctic mass of radiation since 2002, it is a recent day. Okay, this is a recent day from 2002. Then in 2001, you can see that uh, the thickness or the mass of the ice in the polar areas is declining. Then negative and positive impacts of melting ice. Here we make five or six impacts. So number one is temperature. The Arctic and Antarctic are the world's refrigerator, refrigerator let me say, since they are covered in a white snow and ice that reflects heat back into space. They balance out other parts of the world that absorb heat. Less ice means less reflected heat, meaning more intense heat waves will wait. But it also means more extreme winters as the polar jet stream, a high pressure wind that circles the Arctic region is destabilized by warmer air. It can dip south, bringing bitter cold with it. Okay, so the temperature of the world is also affected by the this melting of ice. Then, coastal communities. Another impact is coastal communities. Global average sea level has risen by about seven to eighteen since nineteen thousand. Then it's getting worse. Rising seas endanger coastal cities and small islands nation by exacerbating coastal flooding and storm storms, making dangerous weather events uh, even more so. Glacial melt of the Greenland ice sheet is a major predictor of future sea level rise. If it melts entirely, global sea can could rise straight to feet. Then food, you know, Polar vortex increase heat wave and unpredictability of weather caused by ice loss are already causing significant damage to crops on which global food system depend. This instability will continue to mean higher price for, for growing uh, crisis for the whole, the world's most vulnerable. Then shipping, 
This is a positive in part. An ice melts, new sipping route open in the Arctic region. Then well life, how well life affects. When there's less sea ice, animals that depend on it for survival must adapt or perish. Loss of ice and melting permafrost spells trouble for polar bears, walruses, Arctic fox, snowy owls, reindeer, and many other species. As they are affected, so too are the, the other species that depend on them. In addition to people, well life and people are coming into more frequent contact and often conflict as well life approach on Arctic communities looking for refu uh, refuse as their sea ice habitat disappears. Then permafrost is also another important impact. Then temperature rise. Here you see history of global surface temperature since 1880. The, the zero lines represents the long-term average temperature for the whole planet. Blue and red bars show the difference above or below average for its year. So NOOA 2020 annual climate reports, the combined land and ocean temperature has increased at an average rate of 0.13. Then, you know, the average rate of increase since 1981 is 0.18% has been more than twice that rate you now. The average cross land in Alsons, the 2020 surface temperature was 1.76. It is warmer than 20th century average. Then in 2020, uh, it's recorded the second warmest year according to NOAA temperature data. So this temperature rise uh, impacts agriculture, ecosystem, species, food and farming, water, coastal health, coral bleaching, environment, okay? You know, temperatures, global warming stress ecosystem through temperature rises. Water shortage, increased fire threats, drought, wet and pest invasions, intense storm damage and salt invasions. Some of Australian great natural icons, such as a Great Barrier Reef are also threatened due to temperature rise. Then species, one in six species is at the risk of extinction because of climate change. To survive plants, animals and birds confronted with climate change have through option move or adapt. Then food and farming change to rainfall patterns, increasingly severe drought, more frequent heat wave, flooding and extreme weather make it more difficult for farmer to graze livestock and grow produce. Then water, you know, re reduce rainfall and increasing severe drought may lead to water shortage and water scarcity. Then coastal erosion is also another important factor. Rising sea levels and more frequent and intense storm surge with more erosions of, uh, especially in Australian coastline, wearing a wide and inundation community and residential uh, properties. Health increasing severe and frequent heat we have may lead to death and illness, especially among the elderly. Higher temperature and humidity could also produce more mosquito burn diseases. I think that we can understand about this thing in the first uh, technical session also. Damage to homes is another important factor and coral bleaching. Rising temperature and acidity within oceans is contributing to extreme coral bleaching uh, events like the 2016 events that destroyed more than one thousand of the Great Beer Reef in Australia. So agriculture, let me go to the agriculture. Agriculture, you know, well, carbon dioxide, uh, CO2 is essential for plant growth. All agriculture depends also on steady water supplies and Climate change is likely to disrupt those supplies through floods and drought. You know, uh, you may think that uh, it may have negative impacts uh, uh, of agriculture by climate change. At the meantime, you know, according to the study of Oliver and Michael Benson in 2007, their, uh, their published 
their works, the economic impacts of climate change, evidence from agriculture output and random fluctuation in weather in Amer Journal of American Review, they show that the changes in uh, temperature and precipitation forecast by the standard models of climate change will actually benefit agriculture in America. So this, uh, this paper measures the economic impact of climate change on US agricultural land by estimate the effect of random year to year variation in temperature and precipitation on agricultural profits. Their estimations indicate that climate change will increase annual profit by 1.3 billion US dollars in 20, uh, 2002. So environment, here in environment, we can have positive and negative impacts. Positive effects of climate change may include uh, greener rainforests and enhanced plant growth in the Amazon, increased vegetation in northern latitude, and possible increase in plankton biomass in some parts of the oceans. Negative response may include further growth of oxygen pollution zone, contaminations or exhaustions of fresh water, increase incidence of natural fire, extensive vegetation, and changes in seasonal periodicity, disrupt to food chains and species loss. In Mizoram scenario, here I mention that the climate change. You see, in the introductory report, I clearly mentioned that my presentations look like a conclusions, a conclusions of all the presentations of this seminar. Just like that, you know, from the first and uh, second presenters, second first and second resource person in the first day, we see that gradual increasing temperatures in Mizoram. Well, declining precipitations or rainfall. Then deforestations also. So you know this, uh, I will not point out the data because it may be a repetitions. That is why it will be more for the participants. So gradual temperature, uh, temperature rise, declining precipitation, rainfall, deforestation, except deforestation. Gradual temperature rise and declining precipitations is a future scenario from my point of view. I mean is that this gradual temperature rise in Mizoram and declining precipitations in rainfall will at uh, will having adverse effects in the future, not in the present day. You know, from the um, yesterday. Smart agriculture uh, regarding smart agriculture. Okay, climate smart agriculture presented by Moite, and you see climate change and agriculture in Mizoram presented by Dr. Rimpuya. Uh, according to Rimpuya, he mentioned that the agricultural output in the eastern part of Mizoram is increasing due to the uh, gradual temperature rise. The correlation between the temperature rise and the uh, agricultural productivity is very high then you know that is why uh, we, we can say that this gradual temperature rise and declining precipitation of rainfall would not affect the agricultural productivity i mean is that negative impact okay so in the present status you know due to the gradual temperature rise and declining precipitation of rainfall it may be declining precipitation of rainfall or may the main is that the gradual temperature rise. From my childhood, I experienced a lot about this temperature rises. You know, in when I was a, a child, you know, there are in the western, north and western part of Mizoram is used for uh, cultivations of orange and lemon like that. But you know, but now if you uh, look the western side of Mizoram, if you see that the plantations of rubber, then oil palm plantations from 2007, then Arya nuts plantations, it is more benefit for the consumers. At the meantime, in the eastern part of Mizoram, 
during my childhood, lemon and orange is not suitable in the East side. But at the mean, but you know, in the present uh, state, you know, uh, zero presentation also clearly mentioned that you know, orange cultivation is found in the Sailam area. Just like that in Moorland area, Moorland area, the eastern part of Mizoram also, uh, it is very suitable for cultivations of orange. So, you know, Tengtere. Tengtere, uh, my hometown is Chongklai, uh, Kozol district. So, Tengtere, during my childhood, Tengtere cannot arrach at Halo, Tengtere in my, uh, in my locality. But today, you know, there are uh, Tengtere, Kung Hian, it's produced a lot of arrach and things, food and things like that. That is why you know this gradual uh, temperature rise affects the agricultural patterns of Mizoram in a positive way. But you know, without uncheck of deforestation and without having preventive measures of this gradual temperature rise and decreasing uh, rainfalls, in the future there will be a lot of problems. There will be a lot of problems. Then, you know, regarding these deforestations, according to, uh, according to the survey of India, a forest survey of India quotes in 2019, from, 90, uh, from uh, 1991, you see that in Mizoram, there is a decreasing trend of dense forest, where open forest is increasing. So, if open forest is uh, open forest is increasing rapidly, then it will become a large part of our area will be grass. Then after that, it may become desert. So it is very curious about it. So, but now you know due to the um, amount rainfall, as we are living in the tropical areas. Even though we have, even though we doesn't have a large amount of uh, dense forest, we are having a large amount of open forest. It means that you know uh, there is no more problems. That is why we can say that in Mizoram scenario, climate change is a hazard. It a hazard, not disaster, but blessing for agriculture and other practices. If it is hazard, you need to curious about it before it's attained the disaster. If it's attained the disaster, many people and many uh, animals may affect it. That is why this climate change in Mizoram, that, uh, before it's attained the disaster stays, then we have to prevent it. Our forest, we have to prevent it or we have to take initiative we have to uh, aware our community. We have to uh, aware our local uh, local leaders and uh, politicians also. Then that is why how threat has that become uh, become benefit. Then rainwater harvesting. You see, if the precipitation is declining in our area, then it will become uh, you know. Uh, water scarcity in the near future. That is why from now on, we have to practice water, rainwater harvesting in our uh, own area. Rainwater harvesting is one of the most important uh, factors to uh, prevent from water scarcity. Then another important point is that water set management. You see here in Mizoram, it is a hilly areas most of our stream is look like peren uh, perennial rivers, but you know, perennial rivers, uh, uh, if the precipitation is declining for a decade, for, uh, for a decade, then you know, this stream is also uh, uh, begun to uh, dry up in the summer seasons. That is why we need to have uh, an integrated water, uh, water set management. This will be very important. Then this water set management will be useful for plantations and it will also be useful for uh, 
agriculture, especially in the hill areas. Whenever we look about the eastern parts of the Asia, like Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, you, saw, you see there, hilly terrace cultivation is very wonderful. Here in Mizoram also by using this water set management, we can also be practiced that kind of thing. Then the first and foremost importance is that awareness of the uh, um, community. Then the third one is conservation of forest. Conservation of of forests is very important because you know we experience deforestations due to uh, zoom cultivations or other important um, practices. Then how to conserve our forest? The first important point is that regeneration of high altitude region, it is elevated area. For example, Pong uh, Pong Hui, Bu Mountain, Mui Fang. You know. Here in Mizoram, uh, the, sl the slope is very steep in some areas. So cultivation is not available in the upper parts of the hills. That is why to regenerate high altitude regions, we have to plant more trees, then we make it, the, the high altitudes make it, uh, or we reserve it for conservation of forest. Then open forest, dense forest. The second one is open forest, dense forest. Then if we have a large amount of open forest, then if we take care that open forest in a good manner, with uh, good manners, then we can simply divide it or we can simply make it to the dense forest after 10 years. So we need to focus on this kind of thing. The open forest is a hazard. It may become uh, uh, it may become uh, desert after uh, ten or twenty decades. But you know, this open forest again is used for uh, is managed in a manner way. Then we can also regenerate and we can also make it an, a dense forest. So the dense, the dense forest cover will also increase. Then how to, uh, how to use that open forest and uh, high altitude region? For example, in Songtai, they practice cherry blossom. And Tsangpai also, uh, I visited in 2023, I recognized some, some part of the land is also used it for plantation of cherry blossoms. Then, not only cherry blossom, vaube and other important uh, flowers here in Mizoram is also very uh, uh, also available for plantations. Then not only for conservation of forest, it will also attract tourism. If tourism is attract from that cherry blossoms and vaube blossom or any kinds of plantations, then the revenue will also increase. So it will be benefit for us. Then community reserve area. Here, most of the villages in Mizoram in the last 10 years, they are practicing community reserve area. But uh, in the current year or in the present day, in the present day, these practices of community reserve area is, uh, is declining because uh, of the private land ownership. So uh, regenerations of community reserve area is very, very important for conservation of forests in Missouri. Then you see this is the festival at Japan, Cherry Blossom Festival. As we already mentioned that, you know, promises of tourism, like Cherry Blossom Festivals, if you can organize this Cherry Blossom Festival in some high and some climb, then the promises of tourism will be enhanced. Then the, we have to earn a lot of revenues. Then we also conserve forests and then we also regenerate a large amount of forest area. Then this is Rayek Pong Pui and Tang. You saw this is uh, look like uh, uh, Rayek is look like you see, uh, especially the upside, the Samoan of these mountains, uh, rains is, uh, you know, you can see that erosional activities. So that to regenerate this Rayek Tang and other Tang, Tselfil Tang, and Pong Pui is very, very essential for, you know, uh, conservation of forests in our area. This is just for an example. There may be a numbers of uh, hill rings and mountains to able to practice uh, this 
kind of plantations. Then here, uh, this is some pie. This is some pie. You see, this is the uh, rice cultivation area. Then you see here in the in the surrounding areas, there is a vast grass cover area. It may be useful for you know Sunday Thailand non mo, but you know this area may become a very dense forest if we practice plantations of trees or cherry blossom like that, so that this Tampai area is also uh, available for uh, practicing this kind of uh, management. Then who are the stakeholders? You know, government is the stakeholder, first stakeholder you see, making policy is an important tool for conservation of forests. Then local community and NGOs, you see, it, in Mizoram, most of the villages have their own community areas. That is why government also simply uh, involved in utilizations of their areas. And that is why, uh, with the help of NGOs, the local community leaders can involve in the uh, uh, conservations of forests. So, in the policy making, also in the policy making, if the government going to make a policy regarding this conservation of forests, involve in uh, local community and NGO in, uh, initiative or in, in, in involve is an important point at the implementation and decision making. You know, in 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 India and in. Mizoram also. There are a lot of activities from the government sides to conserve our forests. We have a very, uh, we have a very uh, active uh, department like climate change and forest conservation department. You, you see, but you know when they are uh, when they are making policy, sometimes they never uh, invite or they never uh, consult the local community to uh, involve in the implementation and decision making stage. So, you know, from the government side, they make it a very good plan, but you know, at the actual ground, implementation is always fail. That is the problem here in Mizoram, not only in conservation of forests, but also in the uh, flexible program of gov government like NLUP, and I don't know uh, whether it's going to uh, happen in SEDP. Then another important point is that educational institutions, you know, educational institution today also the government, some high colleagues, Department of Geography organized, you know, a seminar of this climate sense, you know, the institutions is play an important role through research activities and supports government policies. Then to aware the community or the younger generation, you see institution is the past. That is why to, to combat climate change problems and to conserve forest resource management, the institution, educational institution can have a vital role. Then at, at last, but not the least, everyone can involve in this combating of climate change. Thank you. Thank you once again, the organizer of webinars on state level. Thank you, sir. That was a very informative and suggestive uh, presentation. Uh, and uh, I hope uh, all of the participants are enjoying your uh, uh, resourceful presentation. So uh, if uh, any uh, one of the participants have uh, inquiries, questions, uh, sir, it's available to answer your questions. Again, you can unmute yourself or e uh, you can uh, put your answers in the chat box so that sir okay. uh, can also see your questions. There is potential. Uh, uh, Miss, can you? Read out the questions. I can see in the chat book now. Uh, maybe... Seems like, sir, there, uh, this is for the uh, previous session. I think there is no questions here so far okay. uh, in the chat box. Mm. Yeah. 
Again, sir, uh, I think uh, maybe there are no questions. Or oh, let me see one message is there. Sir, you can can you uh, read the chat box? Or yeah. I yes, I can. Yes, yes. Okay, from P. Rizet Lamir. Being from outside Mizoram and never been to the state, I have learned a lot and again much knowledge about geographical aspect of the state through this webinar. The best part is being able to get updated data and latest information than what we usually get in books. It is an information pack webinar. Thank you to the organizer and resource person. Thank you so much, Mr. P. Rizet Slamir. Thank you so much. It, uh, it seems like this is not a question. I think uh, thank you so much, P. Lamare. Uh, if you have uh, questions, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, it seems like there are no questions, I think, so far. Uh, your presentation uh, is very clear enough. Uh, maybe that's why there are no questions. And again, thank you, sir, uh, for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cindy. <coughs> Okay, now uh, I would like to invite uh, Associate Professor Kielan Matsuona, Department of uh, Geography, Governments of High College, uh, to uh, make a closing speech. Yes, thank you, Ms. FVL Mangaizwali, for inviting me to say hello thanks to all the participants on behalf of Department of Geography, Government of High College. First, I want to convey the department happiness to our respected, prin respected principal, Kupi Lalmingdiala, on his permission to have this state level webinar on climate change, a bring concern for Mizoram and his beautiful welcome speech. Our head of department, Pu El Kumabate, along with the teaching staff, wanted this state level webinar for facing math accreditation team. Pu El Kumabate is in interest and present a keynote speech in. <coughs> A big information. Honorable Chief Minister, former student of this college, Wu Tize Nanungkuanga, was invited to inaugurate this <coughs> state level webinar. As he is a Minister of Environment, Forest, Climate Change Department. Our Honorable Minister happily accepted our invitation. On his inaugural speech, he gave the importance of forestry and water management for Mizoram and abroad. Government policy and duty of the people. Thanks. Thank you, our Honorable Minister. Owing to the permission from principal, Mr. Lauren the Silo, organizing secretary, sent out an invitation to those resource persons who were willingly accepted. Dr. Van Lerton Puya, assistant professor, government ISO North College, present 
lung degradation and its consequence in Mizoram. Gabriel Lalsandima, Lalsandama, Assistant Professor Zahman Zet and Tima Kures, give his interaction regarding the an overview of climate change, a case senior of Mizoram. Rami Moi, Assistant Professor of Government from College, gave us a very beautiful information on climate smart agriculture. Dr. Lalton Kuya Vangxia, Assistant Professor of Government at Field College, willingly spare his time for to evaluate climate change in Mizoram. Dr. C. Ming Sang Zuala, Assistant Professor, Government Not Here Place, convey about the climate change blessing or a disaster. C. Zirngak Mura, Assistant Professor, Government Shanghai College, said, present shifting agricultural system of Mizoram to combat climate change with a great interesting information in which shifting cultivation is to be changed as it causes deforestation and scarcity of water resources. <clears throat> My heartfelt thanks goes to the resource person and all the participants for participating in this state level webinar on climate change. Last of all, we, the college family, are in oneness for, for having this state level webinar and progress of our colleagues. Again, I want to spare my happiness to our co host, Ms. F. V. L. Maizoli, and Ms. Malsong Tuan Chante, on their sincere presentation. With that, we conclude our webinar. Thank you all for attending this state level webinar on climate change, a brief concern for Mizora. Thank you to all the participants. Thank you.